How much, how much um, animosity did you have with Clay going into the fight, and um, what were your thoughts as far as him being able to survive the first round? I mean, uh, that may have been the best round that you ever fought, and, and somehow he managed to uh, get out of it. What were you kind of thinking about all that? Um, you know what? I just got tremendous respect after tonight for Clay because I've, you know, I haven't been in a blood, a blood barn barner like that since Nick Diaz and. You know, I hit him with some knees, some kicks, some uppercuts that uh, were right on the button, and he just kept kept on coming. So, if anything, that was you know, it wasn't discouraging, but I was like, oh, gotta catch, my, gotta catch my breath again. I gotta, gotta gotta let the blood come back to my arms. Let me let me take a second here, because yeah, the guy, you know, he's known for his conditioning, and he came prepared. I was prepared also. But um, you know, I, I wasn't prepared for him to survive the onslaught that I put on him in the first round. Diego, actually, a question for you of what was going on during the fight. You were using elbows off your back, and it's been this gray area with elbows off our back as far as for spiking elbows and uh, legality of hitting somebody closer to the top of the head. Was there ever a point where the referee was warning you for those elbows? Because those were very effective. Well, you know what? He told me, um, he said, just watch the back of the head. And I know, I, I, you know, obviously, you know what? I learned that technique by watching Kenny Florian in the Joe Lazon fight. They let it go on in that fight. So I'm like, hey, man, Kenny can do it. I can do it too. You, you know, Guida. In all of his fights, he lays down on top of guys like that. And so I'm like, hey, you gonna lay down on top of me like that? I'm gonna throw those hard elbows at his face. And that's why I got an ice pack on my arm because I landed a bunch. Diego, what was your biggest concern with Clay going into the fight? Um, my biggest concern with Clay was um, just, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, didn't, I didn't think of him as a dangerous opponent. I thought of him more as a grinder opponent, a person that grinds people out, that kind of gets the takedown and stays on top position. And, I, and to be truthfully honest, I wasn't really worried about that either. When it got really, really bloody, and it was, we were, it was just really slippery. So my, my, uh, my jiu-jitsu skills from the bottom were kind of like, okay, you know, I knew if I was gonna be going for arm bars, triangles, and it was gonna be a hard effort be, with being all that blood, in effect. Diego, over here. Um, do you feel now that you deserve to be number one contender in line to fight the BJ Penn, Kenny Florian winner? You know, um, that was my 15th fight here in the Octagon. And, um, you know, aside from the fight with Koscheck and Fitch, it was a split decision. You know, I, I paid my dues here at UFC. And, um, I just feel that that's up to Lorenzo and Dana and UFC. They feel that I bring that exciting, entertaining fight that they want for a title fight, and then they can put me in there. You know, if they that's that's their decision, that's their call, and I respect their judgment. But I do definitely feel I'm the number one contender. I always have. <laughs> We are, we are hoping Clay can join us. We're waiting for him to finish his stitches, so hopefully he'll be up here shortly. Diego, um, over here to your right. Um, were you surprised that, that Clay kept coming after taking all those hard shots? Um, I, I was surprised, and um, guy got hard, man. Guy's got, a, guy's got a couple hearts in there because, you know, um, to keep coming, and then, you know, he kept coming in the striking, too, knowing that I was landing the more effective striking, and and I was picking my picking my shots off, and the guy's a he's a he's a little Tasmanian devil, like they call him. He is, and you know he he was in the position to fight me for a reason. He earned his shot with his wins over Danzig and and Diaz, and he he put himself in that place. And um, I I just uh, was the more technical uh, fighter that executed the game plan right, and I went in there and and was just a nightmare. And um, you, you came out a lot faster than you did in your, your first fight at lightweight with uh, Joe Stevenson. Are you feeling more comfortable now at 155? Um, you know, it's a science. You know, it's um, I'm, I'm getting experience doing it. Um, I, I was in great shape for the Stevenson fight training up in Tahoe um, at the high altitude. That really gave me a, a good edge um, training the high altitude. I trained really hard in San Diego for this fight with um, my, my jiu-jitsu squad and... Uh, 
also Tony Powell Fox and Saul Ibero and um, all, all, all my teammates in San Diego. We, we trained hard for this and um, you know it's just the science man. I, I really really this fight my game plan was to to come in a little stronger, a little heavier. That way it would be, make it a little tougher on him to take me down. But um, it, that also affected my weight cut a little bit. And uh, the last two pounds were a little tough. But um, yeah, I'm learning and um, I'm just thankful that I get these two experiences before I go for the big one. And I, you know, if, if they do decide to put me in there next in line as a number one contender, that I'm gonna give it everything that I have and my conditioning and just that there will be no vacation and I'll be back in the gym getting ready for that. And and one final question. You, you've been where James and Ross are now. Um, what advice would you give to them going forward? Um, same advice that I give any mixed martial artist and that's just to believe in yourself and work hard and uh, put yourself, surround yourself around, around good, um, mentors and, and, and good trainers and good people that are going to be positive influences in your life. Hey Diego, were you surprised by the uh, split, uh, split decision and what were you thinking after the first two rounds? Were you thinking that you would want both of them or were you thinking that you had to come out and prove something in the third round? Um, you know what, I, um, I had a very strong first round and um, Second round, you know, I, I got taken down and uh, it was a it was it was a back and forth. I landed some good. I landed a lot of effective shots. Um, I was surprised with the split decision, but um, hey, man, there was a lot of fights tonight that were like that. I was like, whoa. I was like, I was like, I don't know. Um, we got, you know, I'm not gonna criticize the judges, but um, you know, some of the decisions tonight, I was like, oh, that's a little. Mm -hmm. But um, hey, man, it makes for a, you know, it gives that. That, that anticipation, you know? Oh, for Guido, oh, I knew I, I knew I won the fight, babe, so it doesn't really matter. This is a question for Chris. Um, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the last fight was against Josh, that got a little bloody. Was there any um, mental roadblock there for you, or was it um, was it easy to get, easy to get past that? Well, that was a couple fights ago, actually. So, uh, man, I've been fighting for eleven years. I've I've been bleeding for a long time, you know. So, if that's still getting to me, I need to find a new sport. So, uh, that didn't bother me at all, you know. I've I've been cut open many times. I've got stitches before. Uh, I don't think it's ever affected me in a fight. So. Uh, you know, it definitely without a doubt, it's not going to bother me here. And I was just happy this time. It was actually the other guy bleeding all over the place instead of me. So uh, that, that was a plus. And, uh, and I don't ever think it's going to bother me for, you know, past cuts or whatever. I haven't had any problem with it. Cuts opening up again. So, you know, it doesn't ever, it doesn't ever come into my mind. So. <coughs> Uh, Diego, this, is, um, this might sound goofy, but this is a serious question. I mean, Clay's hair has been the topic of much debate, and he's always said that he'll never cut it. But do you actually think that the hair was an obstacle tonight, and it prevented him from seeing certain shots that you were throwing? Um, I don't know, man. I, 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 you'd have to ask that question to Clay. I just was aiming for, for his head, and uh, the hair was there. I think, if anything, yeah, I think it was, you know? I think it was, it put him at a disadvantage, you know, a couple times when I was able to grab his head, it was like, you know, I don't know, the hair was there, and, you know, I wasn't pulling his hair or anything, but kind of gave me a good little, you know, yeah, he's a, the hair probably was in his face, and, you know, I don't know, you didn't have to ask Clay that, honestly. <laughs> 